In this video, we'll talk about that little detail that I skipped over in the video about postulate two, and that is what it means for an operator to be her mission. So in order to talk about this, let's give an example. So we said earlier that any quantity which you measure, any measurement of that property can only give eigenvalues of the operator as a result. So reminding ourselves that an eigenvalue or an operator which gives an eigenvalue for an eigenfunction has the property that the operator acting on the wave function or a given function equals um, a constant a times the wave function again. So this is this is an eigenvalue if it is a constant, if we get the function just times a constant back. And then for expectation values, we have the integral of psi star, the complex conjugate of the wave function, times the operator A acting on psi integrated with respect to x. For a wave function which is an eigenfunction of the operator A, this will give the integral psi star again. And now this A psi becomes a little a psi dx. And since this A is a constant now, we can pull constants out in front of integrals like that because integrals are linear. And then we get psi star psi. And we know that the integral of psi star psi over the entire range of x, if psi is normalized, equals 1 because we set that to be true when finding normalization constants. And then this result here just gives us the constant a back. So the for the expectation value of a, if we are in some eigenfunction of a psi, we will get the eigenvalue for that eigenfunction back if we do some measurement. But physical properties also have the constraint that their values are real. So physical properties, or observables, as we refer to them in quantum mechanics, are real. And what it means for something to be real is that this eigenvalue a will belong to the set of real numbers. Or a, alternatively, will be equal to its complex conjugate. It has no imaginary part. It has only a real part. So if we take the complex conjugate of this entire equation here, we'll have the relation that a star, psi star, making sure that's an operator, equals a star psi star, complex conjugate of everything here. And then we can substitute in the fact that this eigenvalue has to be real and just go ahead and say it's a times psi star. But then, uh, just as we did above, if we left multiply, here we left multiplied by psi star and then integrated. Here we are going to left multiply by psi and integrate the real value of the wave function, not, the, not its complex conjugate. We get the integral of psi a star psi star dx equals the integral, sorry, losing my place here a little bit. All right, integral psi, and we already saw that this returns a psi star dx equals, then similarly we can pull out a in front of the integral because it is just a constant. The eigenvalue is a constant value, does not vary with x psi psi star, and once again, psi psi star, the integral over the entire range of x is going to give us 1. 
so we just get the value a back. So we get the value a at the end of this line here, we get the value a at the end of this line here. So these two lines are equal to each other. So these first integrals that we wrote uh, have to be equal to each other. So that means integral of complex conjugate of psi, operator a acting on psi, integrated over the entire range of x, equals psi a star, let me put the star in there, so I won't have to crowd it, complex conjugate of the operator, complex conjugate of the wave function. So an operator is said to be her mission if this is true. If true, A is her mission. So that's a general definition for what constitutes a her mission operator. And this, is, this basically has to be the case in quantum mechanics because we have this constraint that these eigenvalues are going to be measurable physical properties like the average position, average momentum, average energy. Those are all real values. They don't have any imaginary part. They're not complex. So the requirement that these eigenvalues has to be real uh, leads to the requirement that this statement is true. And this is so. This is, and this is the case if we have a Hermitian operator. So, this is uh, not immediately obvious to you now why this relationship is important. But going forward, we're going to see that integrals like this are going to pop up all the time in quantum mechanics, and this is going to simplify our lives immensely in certain types of calculations. The fact that we can set these things equal to each other, and a lot of results are going to simplify as a result. And so just uh, some ways we can make this more general, uh, writing out some things that we were abbreviating during the course of that derivation. If we do the integral uh, from minus infinity to infinity of any function f of x, a f of x, this was f star, dx equals integral from minus infinity to infinity f of x a star f star of x dx. So that's a more general way of stating this requirement as well that the operator is Hermitian if for any function x this situation is true integrated over the entire region of x. And then taking that taking that one step further uh, the most general result we can say which we'll be using this type of form quite a lot is the integral from minus infinity to infinity dx f star m the mth solution for some some function times a operating on the nth solution so these are in general and usually what we'll see are these are two different solutions uh, to the same Schrodinger equation that they're two different wave two different possible wave uh, functions for the same system and that equals to integral minus infinity to infinity dx fn x a star fm star x. So in coming videos we're going to be utilizing this type of notation, this type of idea, and making some shorthand notation so that we do not break our wrists writing this out every time we need to use it.